Hi, welcome to our little zero-code web page localization example demonstration. The general idea behind this is that we can get down to what I call the zero-code concept. Um, that this is the idea that a single bit of work can be done by the following process without ever having to write a single line of code. And that's the overall goal of trying to uh, establish this localization delivery pattern for web pages. For the uh, um, for the solution, I'm bringing into play a couple different projects uh, products. One called jQuery, which is a JavaScript library framework, and the other one, which is the uh, JSON data format. Uh, JavaScript natively understands JSON data format, so it makes it really easy to do. It took me six, six steps to basically refine this uh, concept and make it into something or other that was basically simple, agnostic, standalone and didn't care what platform it was running from. So anyway, with that in mind, we'll go on with the show. I've created a little reference project here and, um, called Localization Manager is the namespace hierarchy. And we've got in here some resource files, some standard uh, .NET resource files that are com basically XML files in this format, resource data format, that come in name value pairs. I have them established as .ru for Russian, uh, Chinese, and Taiwanese. Um, and you can see that each one of them will have a login ID and then they'll have a value inside the file. When these actually get compiled, it actually creates separate folders with the DLL named in it. And they're all bound to the primary DLL, which is the project DLL. Uh, that's to make a long story short. So with the first rendition of this particular application, I came up with WebForm 1 here, which was my first attempt at it. Um, you can see my basic include. This is just a blank web form without much going on. Uh, and then I've created a path construct to my common services.ashx, which is essentially a, a wrapper uh, for a handler that we can call directly and execute functions within. And I'll show that off in just a little bit here. And we've got a small little translate JavaScript file, which is a support file, which is going to use jQuery to basically automatically translate this. Some of the, the neat things about ASP.NET is how it renders. The rendering engine basically takes any label control and renders it as a span tag. By just adding the cascading style sheet class attribute of T, and of course you could add any of your own classes just by space delimiting them here, this will basically run through each of the spans on this page and for span.t apply um, the actual text on the HTML for the inner HTML for that language. Now this particular pathing mechanism construct also matches the resource file definition. So we have localization manager resources until login. And when they get compiled into the namespace hierarchy, that's actually how they're done. I have a, another thing, which is the standard uh, Microsoft approach to ISO encoding. And it also, you'll notice that it matches the particular files. This is the base ENUS file that's always selected when it can't be found, when nothing else can be found. And then we call common service study SHX. So I am doing a little bit of magic here. I've got a little DLL that I have written, which is called rewrite.net. And essentially what it does is it allows me to make these virtualized paths and then to query out this information and then rewrite it on the fly. So we'll take a look at that um, real quick here in the web config where it's actually set up. So I've got a couple configuration sections here. Um, for the URL rewrites is the one that we're going to look at at the moment. And then we have the URL rewrite rules which are located here. We have one structure where we're going to call it with just some data, and this is a regular expression. And then the match pattern would be the en-us and then common services.ashx with the ashx escaped. The rewrite URL, which is actually is where the data is going to get transliterated to, is going to basically then turn around and call common services with a f, which is the function name, called get localized data, and parameter 1, which is going to be item number two on this list, which is this in parentheses here, and then parameter two, which is going to be the namespace hierarchy, as we defined right here, the namespace, and this is parameter two. Okay, so that's uh, how the simple replacement works, and it does it dynamically. 
we have our label controls with the ID equal to login ID. And going up in here and looking at this, we'll see that we have a enter login ID, which is the name, and then it returns the value. Now, in the case of the base root localization, I could actually remove this text, um, but for the purpose of this, I'm just going to leave it for the moment. We're going to go ahead and set this as the start page and run it. Nothing too fancy here because this page essentially is just in English and only has to be in English. Now, to see the automation of this actually happening, we've got our next 